Hello, right, so welcome to my podcast uh, called Passions. I've got Derminder Singh, right? Have I got it right? You got it. Oh, thank you. You can be a white man and call me Darmanda. <laughs> Darmanda. How do you say your name? Because I was um, at your show, but I couldn't. Actually, um, um, I do, I do uh, introduce myself as Darmanda. Darmanda. To most people. But, but, but in India, it's Darmanda. Darmanda. Darmanda, yeah. Because well, when you say Darmanda. Yeah, Darmanda. Yeah. So I grew up with Shirley. My favorite film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so when you said, uh, when you were calling yourself Darmanda, I was like, that's not how we say it in yeah. India. I'm sure we don't say it. And I was very confused there. Eh? But that's because when my dad wrote it on my uh, birth certificate, yeah, he said Darmanda, but they wrote it Darmanda. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. So on my birth certificate, I think it says Darmanda, but then when he enrolled me into school, they wrote Darmanda. So. Uh, Oh no, the other way around. D- Darmanda is on my birth certificate. So when I was at school, they wrote Darminda. So then it was this ongoing joke every single year yeah. when I was in a new class, a new year, and the teacher would be like, Darminda Singh. And I'd be like, no, it's Darmanda Singh. And by the third year, the whole class would be like, it's Darmanda Singh. And then, yeah, because the teachers didn't get it. Um, yeah, they wouldn't, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, mine is very similar. My surname is Bears. Okay. But when they wrote it, they didn't know how to spell it. So they wrote it at Baines. Right, because I so, was like, that's some, yeah. that's some cracker name. That yeah, is. I know, I know. So I'm quite, I feel quite lucky, privileged actually, yeah. to have an old English surname. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. It totally blows people's minds. Because up until earlier we were speaking about it, I didn't even know you was uh, from Sea Heritage. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, to tell you the truth, a lot of people think I'm African. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I had, honestly, I thought that. I was like, yeah. Joe Baines. Yeah, loads of people think I'm African, which is great because I play on that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, more ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They think it's uh, much longer. And then they, they're talking about your leg. <laughs> they're, they're quite disappointed uh, at the yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, because their, their expectations are really. <laughs> How long was that I before we started doing <laughs> penis jokes? <laughs> this, I'll cut this out. I'll okay. cut this out. Okay. Right, okay. Right, so it's called Passions. I've got Draminda Singh here from Shole, all the way from Bollywood. Uh, come down. To a child. <laughs> Shut up, Pilo. <laughs> What's that bad guy's name? Bugger uh, Singh. Bugger Singh. Bugger Singh. Bugger Singh. Bugger Singh. Hey, but isn't he a bad boy? He that? is, really. Because he all got big later on, didn't he? He got yeah. bigger. What yes. is this? Amjad Khan or something? Uh, there's, no. I don't know what his name is, real name. He's but real. I remember my parents oh, used to put that movie on. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. the time be on. Like, Indians, they have to move the same, watch the same movie yeah. ten times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, man. Yeah. Because, but that's the great thing. I think it's because of the, the dance numbers. It's that thing of, okay, you are in one way waiting for the dance numbers. And it's like watching a musical. Oh, have yeah, you yeah, ever been true. to a cinema in India? No. Man. They get up, they will start dancing. They, there's no like just sitting watching it. They're up on their feet. Whoa. Yeah, man. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah proper. Yeah. Uh, next time I'm in India, I'm going to the Indian cinema then. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, totally. Do it. So, Do so, it. so tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, Where are you from? Where did you grow up? I was um, born in Birmingham, England, hence my accent. Um, in the spa. Sexy accent. It's very sexy. <laughs> Um, I was born in Birmingham, England, brought up uh, there all my life in a Sikh, Sikh background, uh, but in a white community. So um, it, that was, that was, I'm, I'm trying to say it was hard, it actually wasn't that hard, you know what I mean? I kind of, I, because we were brought up around the Irish, so we were really connected with them, like um, on, on the cul-de-sac that we were brought up on. I'd say 40% of the families were Irish, 40%, 50% were English, and then there was us. And then my parents really got on well with the Irish families because of that big family, slightly religious, drink alcohol, eat food, um, and, immig- and you know, hate and the English. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, so we really got on well with them. I lived to quite of a, a, a pri- it wasn't privileged, but we didn't leave the cul-de-sac, you know, um, we'd get up in the morning, go out, play with all the kids, um, it's just a really nice childhood, yeah. And, and um, um, so now you live in uh, Berlin, right? Yeah. And what do you do in Berlin? Why did you move to Berlin, by the way? I left uh, Birmingham, just, I, I started feeling this um, this wave of difference 
um, with the way people were really treating each other. Yeah. I'd like to say I, I pre-Brexited, check me out, I'm a maverick, right? Um, yeah, I just felt that it was changing and I was feeling that people were hating a lot more. The media was turning people against each other. Uh, people were just getting ripped off as well. Like with rents were rising, wages were going down. And I just thought, you know what? Screw this country. The government, I don't know if you'll be able to put this, but in, back in the day, I used to feel that the government used to be like, okay, give us a blowjob and everything could be right. And you'd be like, okay, but don't come in my mouth. And the government would be like, we're not going to come in your mouth. Suck on it and everything's going to be fine. And they'd always come in your mouth, right? And you'd be like, oh, what's that? And you'd say, oh, I'm sorry. It got to the point where the government were like, suck on it and everything could be all good. And you'd be like, don't come in my mouth. And the government were like, we're going to come in your mouth, mate. And people were like, I'll go on then. Um, yeah. They're still doing that. Yeah, they're they're still but they're doing it even worse Yeah, now. that's true. They're uh, really... I, I think it's not worse. It's what's happened now is that it's more open. Because they, I think that what the government's found now is that, hang on a minute, you know, when we do come out, um, it doesn't really affect us that much. It's not, because I think in the older days, it was happening, but it was, oh, we don't want it to come out because it could affect us. But now, so much has it come out, and it hasn't really affected them badly. It's like, oh, who cares, right? Oh, so I'm racist. It doesn't really matter, right? Well, my opinion also these days is people have become so lethargic and so sick of everything that, look, as long as people have got their, their Wi-Fi and their internet and they have a, a certain amount of, to eat yeah. and they get to watch the crappy fucking reality can I swear on this? Go for it, um, yeah. They're crappy reality shows. People are like, you know what? I'm okay with that. I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to, I don't want, if I, if I start investigating or yeah. complaining, where's this going to go, right? Uh, and I really think people have become really lethargic. I think so. They're, so they're letting the government do this to certain groups of people. It, it, it's 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 the same as you know when you take a toad, uh, or, or uh, not a toad. Sorry. Um. So we're going to be a licking toads now, yeah. <laughs> that's How a many different show. Before we talked about drugs. <laughs> no, that's a different. No, you know where you take a like a, a crab and you put it. Oh no, it is a toad, right? It is a toad. Where you put a toad in um oh, in the warm bucket. water? Yeah, the water. Yeah. And if you boil the water very, very slowly, you can boil the frog before it realizes it's being boiled. Yeah. And I think people are the same. They're turning the temperature up, but very, very slowly. So they don't, they're not noticing that difference. Yeah. But if you took it like 10 years ago and now, there's a big difference. Yeah. But we've been boiled, we've been conditioned slowly to just accept it. And we do, and we do. And also it's the, the way they've, they've, they've turned everyone out against each other. That, for me, that was one of the reasons also why I left England, where I was like, wait a minute, this is we got brown people really going against brown people, yeah. right? Just because these brown people are from a different country or a different religion, they're really, really... I, I understand it more when it's a religious thing, yeah. because this is centuries of whatever. Yeah. But when it's um, brown people going, oh yeah, but these Somalians or... Well, even these Romanians, you're like, seriously, man? And my dad, I remember a uh, really interesting thing he said to me. Uh, it was like, back in the day, Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, Irish, we would all sit together at the lunch break, right? Because we had one common enemy, and that was the English, right? Yeah, but you know, Gandhi said, says the same sort of thing. He said, like, when he was growing up, he... he you know, when he was hung around with Muslims, he went yeah. to Muslim church yeah. or whatever it's called, mosque, um, and just moved around between the two without any problems. But you know, the, the British, you know, they're not very good at separating uh, cultures, are they? <laughs> I mean, they not didn't all, separate. Not all. Yeah, not yeah, at all. Not right? all. Like Pakistan <laughs> and India, they, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not very good at. Yeah. They're not very good at, my, you know, separating but, cultures out. But that was really, a, but that was interesting for me when I grew up grew up and got older and I realized this is why they made India and Pakistan where they went holy shit we've lost to this little bald fella in a nappy yeah. what can we do to the destroy fucking, his yeah. dream yeah his dream was one yeah, unified that's right. country yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. they and it's some vicious ass shit this is that shit that the British Empire did which the people to this day are still suffering yeah. you know what I mean but and they do it they, they've, they've done, done it all over the world though 
I mean, I was reading up on the opium wars. Oh my God, this is the uh, the Chinese. They fucked the Chinese. Like um, the opium wars was Britain selling opium to the Chinese, and the Chinese government was whoa, 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 this is fucking our people up. Yeah. And so they said, no, no, you're not allowed to. So Britain then invaded China to keep the uh, opium routes open. Okay. Purely for that reason, because they were making a lot of money from Proper it. Proper drug dealing gangsters. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Britain is a yeah. drug. Britain not only is a drug dealing culture. They they also the, what, I think the third or the fourth biggest weapon arms trader oh, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, world yeah. as well. So yeah. Well, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you still live there, bro. <laughs> I'm proud to be British. I'm proud. Yeah. I'm so, just proud. <laughs> so so, what's your passion in life? What what, what gets you up in the morning? What's um, uh, my partner? I love my partner. Uh, I love I love connecting with people. I love doing stand-up comedy. Um, uh, Ed, being at Edinburgh Festival is something that I love because it totally proves to me how much I love stand-up. Because if you didn't, if you don't like performing, you're not doing what you're you're doing, right? Yeah. You don't get up and do five shows a day. If you don't love performing, it's you don't invest as much money as you do, right? Yeah. It's just for your ego, as a passion project. No, no. Um, if you didn't, if I didn't love stand up, I'd just, just mess around, you know. What were you doing before stand up? I've always been a performer. So since I was um, a tiny, tiny little kid, I knew I wanted to perform. And uh, and then I went from school plays, then to theatre. Uh, to them performing on um, like the Birmingham Rep, which is the massive theatre in uh, Birmingham, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then studying drama, leaving college, school. I hit the table. Is it not an earth shake? Um, to going, leaving college and going straight into acting. All right. Uh, and then just, I've always performed. So, so, so when you moved to Berlin, what, what was your first job there? What were you doing in Berlin? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I was teaching English. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was a Brahmi up. teaching English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't add up. No, right? no, no. In the, these language camps. Uh, and also, but also, I was doing um, a bit of voice work as well, like for educational books. And I still do a little bit of that. Um, what else did I do? I did some extra work on movies because they're, they're pretty big film industry there so I was making money from doing that um, yeah and the cool thing about Berlin is you only have well it, you, it's a bit changed now but the cost of living is so low that you're not constantly working and then at the end of the week all your money goes to your rent or your bills you know um, so you just can work a little bit and then you can, that's why you have so many artists in Berlin you know, ah, right, okay, yeah, yeah. Because you work a little bit, and then the rest of the time you can either pursue your passion, of whatever art it is, yeah. or just take lots of, lots of ecstasy and dance to check. That, I'm moving to Berlin now. Yeah. That's it, straight away. <laughs> Drugs is my favorite. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so what makes you. Um, so, I have this um, tagline laugh, learn, love. And I think for me that encompasses life. So, what makes you laugh? Uh, my partner makes me laugh a lot. She's funny without meaning to a lot of the times. Uh, life makes me laugh as well. This is going to sound really wanky, but I make myself laugh <laughs> a lot. Um, and the absurdities of life really make me laugh. Yeah. And and what's um and what do you do stand up because you want to make people laugh or do you want it, or because it makes you laugh. I want to make people laugh. It's it's the number one thing is I'm I'm a proper crowd pleasing comedian. Really, I'm I'm doing it because I'm addicted to that energy of the laugh. Um, that is like, yeah, nothing makes me happier than doing a, a good set or for my solo show doing a good show and then afterwards people have been laughing all the way through it and they come up and then they say. We loved you because of this or because of this. Um, yeah, there's no use doing it if you're not getting a laugh. Just be, just be a TED speaker. So what? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be a TED speaker. So what? Uh, what do you? Um, what have you learned in life that 
is profound or life changing or uh, um, you know has affected you in a in a big way? What learnings have you had about life itself? Um, I think it's a lot easier to be nice than to be a douchebag. I've realised that. Um, don't don't surround yourself with negative people because that will drag you down. And um, and that's about it, just be nice to people. It's, I really get, because when you're nice to people, it's also quite selfish because it will release whatever endorphins in your own head uh, and uh, it makes you feel better. So it's also, you could say it's selfish being nice. Of course, But um, yeah. But no, just, just be nice to people, unless they're being super douchebags, and then um, tell them that. And so if you were to give uh, advice, say, to your kids, what advice would it be? You know, like, what's the, what's, what, check, what would make yourself, them Check yourself, check your own actions, be responsible for your own actions, don't blame other people. Because um, we, we live in a culture of blame, yeah? yeah. Um, and, and people, and this is our leaders, it's from the top down, is people aren't uh, standing up and going, either we made a mistake, yeah. Uh, one thing I always try and do is whether I have a problem with a person or an argument with a person, I will try and go, okay, how could I have made that into a more positive outcome? And I'll go through it. And my, my partner has a go at me with this. She's like, you're being really hard on yourself. That guy's a douchebag, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, I, we're not born douchebags, right? Yeah. So people have their, their own journeys. So what could I have done to it not maybe get into that point? And then I'll go through every stage and then if I'm like no okay that I did what I could do and it still ended up like that Fair what enough, happened yeah. happened yeah. yeah well the way I look at it is if um, if you blame the other person there's nothing you can do about it because you're the victim That's now it was, it was his fault yeah. but if you blame yourself now you're no longer the victim. So now there's something you can do about it. Whatever, however small, however little it is. I don't even think it's necessarily it's just, about blaming yeah, it's yourself. It's blame. question, question yourself all the time. And, um, but then it, it, the extreme of it is, is like, you know, be confident in your actions. And this is also with comedy, you know what I mean? Uh, whenever I bomb, which isn't that often, um, uh, I will not blame the audience instantly like I know a lot of comedians do. I record my all my material, I, I'll listen to it, I'll go, okay, where did I lose them? Why did I lose them? And if I go through it all and go, no, it was just one of those nights where the audience weren't either ready for what I was saying or they just didn't give a shit about what I was saying. Fair play, we see that as a loss, jump back on the horse, and do it again, you know, oh, yeah. instead of like, I know so many comedians who are oh, like, and, and the opposite as well, oh, yeah, anyone can uh, laugh at that club, anyone can get a laugh at that. Yeah, um, that's true. And you're just yeah, like, yeah. no, 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 take your own responsibility. Um, yeah, it's, it's like on Facebook, um, so many comedians blame the audience. Oh, the room's like this, our audience is like yeah. that. Oh, they interrupted me, and yeah. like, look, it's Ugh. not a, yeah. it's not a, it's not a TV program they're watching, you know. It's it's an interactive thing. So if they interrupt you, you have to know how to handle it. Yeah. And if you handle it the right way, it'll work. If it, um, you know, it's not, yeah. So yeah. when I get interrupted in my show, I'm like, great. They're enjoying it so much, they want to be involved. Yeah. So I take that as a positive thing, and I go, okay, great. Let's see what where we go with it. Well, you just rush through it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like um, well, you can do that. Yeah. I understand when comedians are like someone's talking, but if someone's like just talking slightly, you don't have to address it, right? Yeah. Keep on. If someone's talking to the point that it's disrupting other people's enjoyment, yeah. You either say something or you let the compare do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true, um, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to come across as a hypocrite. There are times when I'm like, bloody hell, what the hell was that audience doing there tonight? Um, they really, but well, that is after I myself have tried several techniques yeah. to go, come on guys, yeah. we're in it together. Da, da, da. Sometimes you get it, but I find uh, sometimes comedians will jump at Oh, well, it was the audience. Yeah. I've seen it here at Edinburgh Festival, and I've, I've seen time, people yeah. who are like, um, oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing all right. The audience suck. And it's like 15 shows in a row, bro. You know what I mean? Because yeah. my audiences are rocking. Yeah. And like, 
and, and, and I've had those. I've had those shows. I think twice here at the festival, where I even came out and went, "Oh, that was a flat show." They weren't with me, and then I've gone back and I've listened and I've gone, mm, "Okay, maybe I was a bit too aggressive at the beginning." Oh, I said this at the beginning that I not normally do. I, I I cursed at this point, which maybe made them go. Um, I, I made a comment about that person, which made them go. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. Take responsibility, people. And what makes you, what do you love about life or whatever you do or everything? I love doing comedy. I love interacting with people. I, I love the, the, the special relationships I have with different people. I love um, switching off at times. I love my solitude at times, you know what I mean? Because, especially as a performer, four times a week, I am on from the moment, especially at my club, from the moment people walk in because I'm on the door, Cosmic Comedy, um, I am on as a sociable person. So sometimes on my, on my free days, I like to, the only person I'll interact with is my partner, and she's really understanding where she's like, okay, if you're doing this, I'm going to leave you alone and I'll be doing this and we'll sit in the same room and we won't even actually say anything to each other for a, an hour. We're just doing our own stuff. So I love my solitude uh, and, I lo and I love also socialising. Um, I love doing comedy. I love my family. Um, I love people generally. You know, I, do, I generally think uh, people are pretty sound. So if you weren't doing comedy, what would you be doing? I'd be performing in some manner. Okay, so Whether it would always would be, be some sort of performance. Yeah, I was, since I was tiny, I would be in the corner of the room while everyone was watching Dallas or whatever, and I'd be making my own little play, and then I'd wait till Dallas was over, and then I'd be like, come and watch this, and he'd be like, oh, God, the idiot, right? Yeah. Um, I would, yeah, or, or even, um, I like, I love doing customer service. Some of my favourite jobs have been doing customer service. So I actually, when I was 16, I tried to get into the police force. I really wanted to help people. Um, so if I wasn't doing comedy or performance, I would either be teaching, I'd be doing some kind of service for other people without sounding wanky. I, I actually almost joined the police. Yeah. Yeah. I, the but the stumbling block was uh, when they told me it was shift work, twelve hours on, twelve hours off. Uh, if, you know, four days yeah. off. I was like, oh, I'm not doing that. Really? Yeah. Really? I didn't want to do shift work at yeah. all. I didn't want to be. I wanted to have a, a regular okay. uh, time scale, like nine to five. I mean, I even went for postal job. Um, I passed all the tests, and at the end, they went. Uh, so you have to be here at three in the morning. I was like, uh, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Did I, I applied to the police cadets because again, I um, I had really positive role models, police role models as a kid. There was the local Bobby. What's his name? David Cross, PC Cross, right? But he he knew my dad, so he would every week or so he'd pop round, have a curry, have a whiskey with my dad, right? Fuck yeah. easy, proper Bobby, right? I'd have his, his helmet on, so I had this positive um, role model as a cop. So I applied to be in the police when I was 16, but they didn't let me in because of my colour blindness. Oh, so if I wasn't yeah. colour blind, and now I think it's not so heavy, but I would have been a copper, you know, and um, and he my journey would have been. You. He would have arrested me. Taking the ganja. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell me about your club, uh, Cosmic um, Comedy. Comedy Club. Yeah, uh, we're in Berlin. Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And I'm running with my uh, good buddy Neil Nub, who's from Edinburgh. Um, and we started working together about four years ago. He was running shows in Berlin. I started hosting a couple of his shows. We really got on well together. He's got an, he's got an incredible work ethic. So we both really have this work ethic that we're like, you know. Uh, life is what you make of it. Yeah. So, and that's the with our clubs as well. We started doing cosmic about three years ago. Uh, every Monday, one meter of pizza, one bottle of shots at every show. Three years later, we're four, four nights a week, five meters of pizza every show, three bottles of shots at least. And um, and what makes cosmic comedy unique is we really make it an incredibly friendly environment. 
We have a nice people only policy. We're not a bear pit comedy club. Screw that. Uh, and that's for the comedians as well. We say, guys, don't attack the audience for no reason. Don't come to our club and be like, what the fuck are you guys doing here to the audience? Because our audience, it's, it's a joy. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the club sometimes I'm a bit tired or a bit depressed about something. Within five minutes of being at the door, our customers coming in. I take that positive energy. We're really about positive energy. So you get a lot of regular customers. We get a lot of regulars. We get a lot of tourists. We get a lot of... Uh, what makes the club so good also is we don't have a specific audience. We have four or five different types of groups of people. Yeah. Um, so for the comedians, it's great because we set up this vibe of everyone's here together. We're a family. So I've had like new comedians forgetting their material and like panicking and the audience just like going come on come on and it makes me so proud that we've created this environment of support yeah. and um and just yeah there's no need to be a dick no. right yeah that's true that's actually quite good because a lot of places they just there's no leeway right? and, and 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 comedians are about uh, attacking a certain member of the audience what that does then it creates a divide in the audience right so these people are laughing at this person but then at any point they're like fuck I could be the one so then they're tense right yeah. but when you set up a, 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 an audience where you're like we're all together we're, we're the ones you laugh at you're not going to get picked on unless you're talking but if you're talking then we'll come for you but if not, we're all together, you know, and yeah. that's what, then they relax and it's like, we, we get people to sit at the front, we have sofas at the front, they're chilling. At every single show, we take a big group family picture and everyone's doing the cosmic comedy signs and um, all our reviews, the one thing that is common on our reviews is it's a friendly atmosphere. Uh, female travelers, solo travelers, feel comfortable because they know that we are watching if there's any trouble we are jumping straight in and in uh, three years I've had to kick out less than 10 people in three years yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and, and what's your show next year then? Uh, I'm going to be bringing back Bollywood Birmingham Berlin Brexit and I, but I think I'm going to change the title Bollywood Birmingham Berlin Brexit and Bullshit so it'll be spelled Bullshit Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. so that's going to be the new version. Also, I'm bringing a mixed show with another comedian called Todd Stuchner, who's like one of my favourite comedians on the Berlin scene. Very unique comedian. And the working title of that is called Bombing in Berlin. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that's the working title. And then I'm going to bring a new show called, and the working title on that is Sun Kissed and Pissed which is more really, uh, again, about personal stories of being uh, Asian and being brown and my personal experiences of that. Because when I first started comedy, I actually had a promoter in England going, your stuff's a bit Asian, isn't it? I don't think my audience are going to connect with that. And I was like, would you say that to an Irish comedian? Yeah. Oh, your stuff's a bit Irish. Or a black comedian. Oh, you know, you talk about being a bit black. And I'm like, now I'm at that comfortable place where I'm like... And also, people do want to hear about this. Yeah. Um, a lot of people after my show will say, we loved getting this different angle uh, of... of we, we have got brown friends. We didn't realise that they might go through this. Or we go through exactly the same thing. You know, so um, I feel comedy, the, your first thing to do is to make people laugh. That's the most important thing, make people laugh. But if you can get people to connect with you, then that is a real privilege that we get. That's really a, a, the, the icing on the cake. Yeah, we can do things that a normal person can't do. We can push boundaries that... Well, no, but don't get me wrong, because I hate it when comedians... We, we try and class ourselves as different. No, no I'm not saying like, we're different. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that I can just do things on stage, which I wouldn't be able to get away off. Uh, in a normal conversation. A normal yeah, conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can say yeah. stuff on stage, which I can I can push the boat at. Yeah. Whereas if I try to do that in a group, people know what the world's going yeah. on. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So that, that's what I mean. I don't mean we're special. Yeah. I mean because 
a lot of people say to me, oh, you're so brave, you know, that for getting up and say, you go, so, so brave. I'm like, listen, mate, the soldier over there, he's, that yeah, proper, that, that guy's nurse. brave, you yeah. know, that, you know, yeah. that nurse cleaning that, yeah. that fireman running into buildings, that's brave. Yeah. We're just idiots on stage talking shit, basically. Yeah, um, yeah no, I get that. Yeah. My, my, my partner always gets annoyed with me because she'll tell a joke and I'll be like, whoa, that's dodge. And she's like, why do you get the license to do it? And I can't do it, and I'll be like, because you're German, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I think we we are privileged, and we should um, always appreciate that there is a group of people who want to listen to us. I hate, I hate when comedians forget. You know what? Without that audience, they are just nothing. a mentalist yeah. shouting, okay. and um, and you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, we're just yeah, and we are mental. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, just me, just me. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. All right, thank you very much. Uh, is there anything you wanna, any last minute thing you wanna say to to the audience? Uh, just thanks for putting me on this. Um, come check me out uh, at Cosmic Comedy in Berlin, Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Like me on Facebook, Comedy Darmanda Singh, and on Twitter at Daro Ten. And, uh, I'll put all the links below. I'll put all good. Links. Yeah, everything Cheers, will be there. Brother. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Brilliant.